So I recently released a video talking about all the different iOS native features that are built directly into your iPhone that are extremely beneficial for travel. Things like using Apple Maps and Translate and things like currency converters that are built in across all the different native Apple applications. But I did touch on the Translate app specifically very briefly and some people wanted to get a complete walkthrough of that application. So that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video because the Apple native Translate application that released alongside iOS 14 is a lot more robust than we actually make it out to be. So without further ado, let's talk about the Translate application and all the features from beginning to end because you will be extremely surprised. Well, all right, everyone, let's get right into this video. And like I mentioned, we will be doing the Translate app and giving you guys a complete walkthrough, which is right here. But I will say that you need to be on iOS 14 at a minimum in order to use the Translate app because that is when it was first announced back in 2020. But if you tap on the Translate app right here, this is what you're greeted with. This is the homepage. This is what everybody sees when you first open up the Translate app. And as you can see, it's a pretty blank canvas. You just have your two sections to actually write something in and then to receive the actual translation. And then you have your ellipsis up here. And then you also have your microphone buttons and you have your swap button right here, which allows you to then go back and forth between the language that you want and the language that you want to actually translate to. But the first thing I want to show off is how many languages you can actually translate with. So if you tap on there, you do have a selection of up to 20 languages. Now that's the one gripe that I have with the Translate app is that it isn't very robust when it comes to the amount of languages that it has. It started off with 18 when it first announced back in 2020 and now we're in 2024 and it's still only added only two more which now gives us a total of 20. But you do go from Arabic to Mandarin to Mandarin traditional to of course the different kinds of English. Then you also have Spanish which they do say it's Spain Spanish as opposed to South American Spanish all the way to Ukrainian and Vietnamese. So you do get a well-rounded amount of actual languages and translatable languages that do kind of encompass a good amount of the Western world at least, but that is to each their own, and I do want Apple to really add more translatable languages moving forward. But to actually use this, it's very self-explanatory. The simplest way is going to be to type something in, so if I type in hello, or hey right here, it'll translate it into Dutch, and then you can change the languages by pressing on the actual language button, and maybe if I want to do it to Spanish, because that's the second language that I speak, so I can really kind of translate it and make sure that it's translating correctly, it will translate it in real time. So it immediately does it, and then you can also full screen it if you want to. So this is your kind of full screen mode, which is very cool to see. Then you can press this to go back to the actual normal mode if you want to. So if I click back on here, we'll press a full screen mode, and then you can even actually press play to listen to it. So of course with the translation, you can translate just simple words and simple phrases, but what I like about it is that it's very particular and specific when it comes to more longer phrases or paragraphs or sentences, and also with punctuation and ending marks. So here you can see that I wrote out, hey, how are you doing? Can you take me to the movies later? It'll add in everything that you need here. So it adds the commas, it adds the correct way to put the question mark in there, both on the front and at the end, because this is in Spanish. And if I switch it to a different language, it'll do the same thing for that corresponding language. So if I do it in French, It'll change it for you, it'll add the accents, it'll add the question marks, it'll add the hyphens, and everything works extremely well. Now, a couple other buttons that show up when you are navigating the Translate app. You do have the star button right here, which allows you to favorite this phrase. So if this is a phrase that you use often, and maybe you are traveling at a certain location for an extended period of time, and you consistently pull that up, then you're able to favorite it, and then it'll go into your favorites folder, which I'll show you in a bit. You also have the dictionary button right here. So if I press on this dictionary button, it'll try to translate each of these words correctly. So it lets you know like hola means hello or hi or something along those lines. But then it'll also open up a second venue for you to actually continue to translate maybe another phrase because now that you clicked on the translate button or the dictionary button, you no longer can actually edit this, this person in real time or this section of it. You then have to go to this next one or this next card to then continue to translate. But you can see that it works extremely well. And then another thing that I like is that there is this copy button. So if you copy it, it's going to copy the translation. So if you need to maybe put this in a text message or in a document or send it off to somebody else, it'll copy that over. So if I go on here and then press paste, you can see that it is translating it from Spanish over again to Spanish, which again, to each their own, but it does allow you to copy it in real time, which is very useful if you are using it, maybe you're trying to take it to another section or another application of your phone. So since we did favorite it, I wanna show you guys what the favorites looks like. So you can see that I did favorite this recent one, but it also gives you not only your favorites, but then it shows you the most recent translations that you've had. So you can see that I was translating these recently, again, as we were doing it earlier. Now you have this absolutely safe. So every time you go to the favorites tab, it will show up and it's gonna be very easy for you to then go in, use it, show it to people, and then even play it out loud. So that is kind of the dashboard of the Translate app. This is kind of the first come first serve, and you can see that it continues to go on the more and more that you wanna do it. But you can also go in here and swipe in the left to delete them if you would like. And I do wanna check if you delete that favorite, will it delete from the favorites? No, it will not. That will stay in your favorites even if you delete it from the Translate app dashboard or the actual homepage. 
But now my favorite part of the Translate app itself is the camera. So as you may have think, it is the camera app. It's going to use the camera app to your advantage to actually translate things with visual and live text. So for instance, I have this Pokemon box right here, as you can see, and it does have a bunch of text back there. And if I kind of put this behind it, it'll start to look at it. It'll tell me to slow down and it'll highlight in real time where it sees text and how to translate it. And then in real time, it will show you what it's trying to translate and then it will translate it also. So you can see that the text above, even though it is relatively small, that was fully translated into Spanish. And then again, you can change this in real time. So if I want this to be in Portuguese, it'll change it to Portuguese. And what I can do is press this picture button and then it'll hold it. And then again, it'll translate it for me. And then what I can do from here is actually interact with this picture that's taken. So I can tap on here and then it'll give me the whole translation. So first off, it'll show me what it actually read and what it translated. And then it'll translate it to me in the translation that I asked it for. So here in this case, it's Portuguese. Then you can copy it, add it to favorite and then download more languages, which we'll get on in a little bit. But you can see how powerful this could be. Imagine looking at a menu in a foreign country with different prices and different monikers and different names and different languages. You'll be able to then translate those in real time, which is beautiful to see. And you can see that it actually picks up on pretty much every aspect of this box. So you're able to translate every single aspect and you can change what those languages are again in real time. So if I want it in Vietnamese, it'll do so. And then, like I mentioned earlier, it'll keep the same punctuations and it'll keep everything in real time. And then also there is a share button so you can share this with other people and it'll share as a translated image. So it'll kind of give you this overlooked image that people can then receive via AirDrop, iMessage. You can copy it, you can save the image, you can assign it to a contact just the way that you would treat any other image. And then of course you just press the X button to kind of go away from it and restart. But if you already have an image in your library, you can just tap this button right here. Maybe find an image that you want to translate. This is from an event that I went to the other day. It'll find all the verbiage all over the picture and then start to translate it for you again in real time. And it'll highlight what it's translating. So if I want to translate that kind of big poster again into Spanish, it'll translate all that. And you can interact with it the same way that you were interacting with the previous one, which is the live image that you took or with the live text. So again, you can add it to your favorites. Hear the translation. So again, very robust, very cool to see. And you can imagine maybe taking pictures of directions or taking pictures at a museum that's in a foreign language and then being able to kind of read it to yourself out loud or read it to yourself inside of your AirPods because you have the live translation and it'll dictate for you as well. All right, and then finally you have your conversation tab. Now this is exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to dictate in real time whatever you're saying in one language and then it'll spit it out in another language for somebody to be able to understand it on the other side. So for instance, I'm gonna change it to Spanish again because that's the one I'm most familiar with. But let's dictate something. Hi, where is the closest library? So it'll give you the actual statement on top in your native language and then it'll translate it. And then of course you can press play and it'll play it out loud for that person to hear. And then what's cool is if you are with somebody on the other side it, and they speak to you and maybe in their native tongue, so if they're speaking to you in Spanish, iOS and the translate app will recognize that so it knows who's talking and in what language. So for instance, Hola, ¿a dónde está el baño? So you can see that it understood that I was speaking in Spanish, it put it on the left hand side and then it translated that to English and then I press play. Hello, where's the bathroom? And then voila, you're instantly having a conversation between each other on different languages directly in the Translate app with little to no real barrier to entry. And then another cool little aspect in terms of visually kind of being able to understand a little bit better, you can change the view up here to face to face. So it's almost like you're standing right in front of somebody else and then they get this view on top, you get this view on the bottom. And then of course you both are speaking to each other in your own native tongues, but then you're able to have a full conversation with them because you know what they're saying in your native language, which is very cool. And again, it just reduces the barrier to entry when you are traveling and you are going to maybe even smaller cities and smaller countries where English isn't really known, which is what we were doing kind of on the tail end of our trip. And then if you do hit on the ellipsis on the top right, you do have a couple options here. You have the download languages, which we're gonna to touch on here at the end of the video. But then you also have the play translations, the auto translate and the detect language. So you saw it detect the language and then you can also auto translate, which is awesome. So it'll detect the language and then auto translate it for you in the language that you would want to, which is beautiful to see. But again, very conversational, very easy to use. And most importantly, it's very simple to just kind of get in there and start using the translate app. So now the final thing I do want to touch on is the actual settings of the translate app. So if we go into settings, scroll down to the translate app right here, there's a couple things that are worth noting. 
So the first thing is going to be downloaded languages. By default, none of these languages will be downloaded on device. So technically, every single time you use a translation app, it is reaching out to, you know, to the internet, it's going up to the cloud, to then translate that in real time as fast as it can. And it is dictating and translating that with the language up there in the cloud, and it's not doing it on device. But now, if you do want to download them on device, so you do know that it's happening on device, and you're not sending anything to the cloud, or anything up there to the internet, you're more than welcome to do that by actually downloading each individual language. Now, these files are relatively big, because it is an entire language model, it's an entire kind of speech model, which is all in there. So depending on who you are and what you do, you might want to decide on picking and choosing which languages you will be deciding to download to save space. But if you want to download maybe English and Spanish and Italian, because that's, you know, you're going to be going to Spain and Italy on a trip, then it could be worth doing. So you're not spending maybe roaming data out in the wild when you are translating in real time. Now, Apple does put a little disclaimer saying that it is best to keep it on the cloud where it's on device translation. It might not be as accurate. And in my testing, it is relatively accurate, especially with simple things. It only really hurts you when you're talking about things that are happening in real time. So maybe news or maybe a new word or something like that. But otherwise, if you're just sticking to very traditional conversations, like where is this? Where is that? How much is this? Where can I find this? You know, what's the best way to get to here? Then it's going to be very easy and it's going to be able to kind of justify that and translate that in real time, even if it is only with on device and downloaded content. But that is a translate app in a nutshell. You have your typical translation, your camera, so the live text, which is beautiful to see, your conversational translation, being able to hear it out loud, so it dictates it to you out loud. You have the 20 languages, you have the ability to favorite things, you have your settings. So that is a translate app in a nutshell. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let's finish up this video. So that will just about do it for this video, everybody. As you saw, the Translate application that's built into iOS itself that comes with your iPhone is more robust than we initially anticipated, right? It gives you all the features that you would want out of a native translating application. You're able to translate in real time, look things up, take pictures and translate menus and stuff in the real world. So it gives you everything that you would need built directly into your iPhone already. My only gripe with the Translate app is that I do wish there was more actual languages that I could translate to. As of right now, there's only 20 different languages that I can translate to like I mentioned earlier, and it started with 18 about four years ago. So in the last four years, they've only added two additional languages. Apple definitely should add more as they see fit. But again, as it stands right now, it is extremely beneficial when I did go traveling overseas a couple weeks ago or about a month ago. And now that you guys are fully equipped with all the knowledge of the Translate app, now you guys can use it along your travels to help you translate or communicate with other languages that you aren't familiar with. But that's going to do it for this video, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a dolphin in the comments down below so that I know you made it to the end and definitely check out our brand new channel membership which launched on may 1st if you guys want to subscribe to that i'll leave all the information down below but if you guys want to watch more videos like this one click on one of these right here and until next time i'm fernando with 9to5mac and i'll see you later everybody peace